And it is a really big day for KKR because they are doing this. They are buying the rest of Global Atlantic, a big insurance company that they don't already own. That is an all-cash $2.7 billion deal. But you're also creating a new unit at KKR that houses a core private equity business. Right. If you had to give the market one way to understand what you're trying to do over there, what is it? Uh, first of all, Shanali, great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Uh, really what we're trying to do today is lay out the big three growth engines we have as a firm. So you're right, we are buying the, the minority stake in Global Atlantic we don't already own. We already own 63% of the company, so we're buying the other 37%. Uh, Global Atlantic has been a great partnership for us. This is a transaction we did in 2021. The company has more than doubled since we announced the original deal in July of 2020. And it's been highly recurring, a lot of growth earnings for, for KKR. So that's part one. We are also modifying our compensation ratios. So our asset management business continues to scale. Our run rate management fees have doubled over the last three years. So the second thing we're doing is reducing the compensation ratio on fees, making an offsetting increase on carry, and that will allow us to create more fee-related earnings for our shareholders. You're changing the way you pay people. In effect, not the aggregate amount of compensation, but we're providing more of the fee-related earnings to our shareholders, a little bit more carry to our people, the net of that is about neutral, uh, but it will mean more fee-related earnings overall. And then the third thing we're doing to your point, and this is relatively new for us, is we're creating a new segment for the firm. So we've historically reported as asset management and insurance. We are adding a new segment called strategic holdings. And what we will include in there are the dividends that we're receiving and will begin to receive in greater magnitude from our core private equity portfolio, which is a portfolio of great diversified uh, recession resistant companies that we've been building up over the last several years. KKR, Apollo, Brookfield, they're all buying insurance companies. All of you are diversifying in pretty meaningful ways. Uh, if you think about it, it's made private equity by the dollars, by the assets under management, a smaller part of all of your businesses. What does this mean? for the future of private equity. Private equity is still a growth business for us. Uh, we expect to continue to grow that part of KKR for a long time, both with respect to the flagship strategies, but also we've created a number of different growth strategies. The core private equity business is part of private equity. It's now a $30 billion franchise for us. So this isn't about an or, this is about an and. We see a, an ability to grow PE and all the other parts of KKR. And we've diversified meaningfully over the course of the last 10 to 15 years. We're just continuing our way down that path. Now, what does Global Atlantic exactly do? It seems like what it's really doing is giving you a whole balance sheet to be using to compete on. You've mentioned capital markets is one place. There's been a lot of competition from your industry to the banks. How does this help you now compete in a bigger way? Sure. Global Atlantic, it's, as you know, it's an, it largely issues annuities to individuals. And so if you think about what what we do at KKR, we work for pensioners, retire, retirees all around the world, now family offices and individual investors as well. Global Atlantic distributes its products to that, that same kind of an audience. So historically, we've worked for tens of millions of retirees. We still do, but now they're just in the form of policyholders. And that's our mission at KKR is to actually do a great job for all those people that we work for. We're not confused about who our bosses are. And so and to the second part of your question on capital markets, what Global Atlantic allows us to do is create more synergy. We didn't necessarily see all this three years ago when we started our way down this path, but th we think there's even more we can do to unlock value between the two companies, and Capital Markets is just one of those examples. Capital Markets means you might be appearing on more and more deals, lending a balance sheet to provide capital for big buyouts and other leverage loan deals. That's right, and we're already in that business. So the way that we built our Capital Markets business is by partnering with the street. So we'll be alongside uh, the traditional banks and investment banks as we built that business. But what Global Atlantic brings us is an ability to expand uh, the vision for that franchise. So there's more to do across asset-based finance, as an example. Or when Global Atlantic does their large institutional block transactions, we can put some on the Global Atlantic balance sheet. GA has its own sidecar third-party capital funds called Ivy, so some can go into those third-party funds. And then we can syndicate the excess through our capital markets franchise as well. Just like we do private equity and infrastructure transactions, it applies to uh, insurance deals as well. Something interesting about these deals is that you already have told investors this morning that this will add 20% to total operating earnings. You're boosting your targets into 2020 
26 for fee-related earnings. What are the real financial impacts? What can stockholders feel for KKR over the next two, three years? Well, I think what they'll be able to see is we are going to grow all three of our recurring forms of earnings in a much more meaningful way going forward. So a fee-related earnings will be higher. Uh, we continue to see a lot of organic growth in our businesses. Uh, just by changing our compensation ratios, you get accretion on fee-related earnings. And we think by virtue of what we're announcing today, we can do even more with Global Atlantic, where we invest that portfolio. It's already gone from $72 billion of AUM when we announced the transaction to $158 billion over the last few years. We think we can do even more together. But they'll also see more insurance operating earnings, which we believe are highly recurring and fast growing. And then we'll have this third element, which will be the core private equity dividends showing up in the strategic holding segment. If you put those three things together, we think that'll be 70% or more of our overall pre-tax income is those three forms of recurring earnings. And we're going to introduce a new metric around that called operating earnings. And we'll talk about that later today with our shareholders.